comes the beautiful beard, man, <laughs> Billy Barton. First guy to try. First. Guy. And uh, so yeah, that was that was a good starting time to lay down, and at that point, it's just time to send it right. And I'm not saying yep. he just pulled a one seven and ran the gun. He pulled a one seven clean from appendix. Right, and right yeah. because we grew up. Uh, a, realizing that a fast draw is important because sometimes the bad guy gets to go first, right? Concealment, obviously, you know, I'm, I'm one of those guys that definitely sticks a gun in my pants every day, and so I, I value that skill set and work on that for sure. Shooting USA is brought to you by Colt, still making history. Here we are just like that. The ringer, the man himself, <laughs> Billy Barton joins me. Billy, welcome to the video cast. This one, we have plenty of things to talk about, but first and foremost, sir, you look like a million bucks. How are you? <laughs> Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Doing great. Thanks for having me on. You got it, dude. Um, I mean, I guess we just dive right into it. The Bill Drill Challenge, the first of what I hope to be a series of events going forward. Um, you know, let's walk through the events of the Bill Drill Challenge. We were at the Carry Optics Nationals, and here comes the beautiful beard, man, <laughs> Billy Barton. First guy to try, first guy to make an attempt in the qualifier. That's you. And it's raining, yep. and uh, I was thoroughly shocked, and at the same time, I was thankful that Isaac happened to be standing around because he pointed you out. He said, this dude is significant. <laughs> um Take me through that experience. Tell me how it went for you. Yeah, man. So I know there's been some, <laughs> there's, been, there's been a lot of talk about why I showed up early and so forth, I think, um, on, on that first day since then. But, you know, I guess I, t I took a couple things away from that kind of intro event last year. Uh, one of which was, uh, you know, last year, Isaac and I were obviously kind of battling it out day by day um, throughout the entire match. And so you're sitting here trying to visualize your stage and someone's running up to you like hey man Isaac just beat your time or whatever and it was just like very distracting so I said hey man I just want to go up there first thing day one I was shooting p.m. for the match I just I want to show up throw my time down I had a goal that I wanted to, to hit which was sub one and a quarter um, and then I'll just be done and I just won't have to think about it for the next few days until the final comes up and I can just focus on the match and so um, so yeah that was kind of the the strategy there, I was kind of sneaking in under the radar, but it just so happened that you and Isaac were, were standing there, and so it was pretty cool that we uh, ended up getting it, you know, on camera. But well, it, was, uh, it was vitally important because otherwise we're doing a, <laughs> a JRE Tunes kind of a recreate if we're not yeah. there. Now, admittedly, we weren't really ready um, with the rain. <laughs> no one's participating. Yeah. We had, you know, the thing had been set up, and nobody has tried yet. However, thankfully, we were able to slap it together in such a way because I'm in the middle of working through all of the video. We've got a total of 10 cameras worth of video from the event. Not all of it was wow. dedicated to the qualifier, but um, in that particular instance, right out of the bag, literally the first string is, is sub 1.5, like cold and when I say cold, I'm not talking about just he's cold, he hasn't shot yet. It's flipping cold. It's like 60-something <laughs> degrees and drizzly rain and gray skies. And right out of the bag of 1-4. Is that pretty much your conservative starting time? Is that like where do you feel that sort of plays into your, into your repertoire as far as getting started and feeling the gun right away? Yeah, no, that was that was a little bit spicy. I like, you know, my my uh, I like to say my my kind of class demo pace, if you will, right? Where I have one shot and I'm just trying to guarantee alphas. Uh, it's more like a you know 160, um, sure. and so that's kind of my more my conservative like on demand uh, pace. But you know, sometimes the draw just lands perfect and you see the dot right there in the center, and so there's no reason to waste time. You just kind of let it go, and that one went went pretty well. And uh, so yeah, that was that was a good starting time to lay down, and at that point, it's just time to send it right after that and to see what you can hook up on uh, when you have that. multiple attempts like that so i love that strategy piece on your part because you we, we sort of talked about it on the fly in between a couple of those deals and we had to repair targets at one point but you had one string of fire at that uh in that initial volley that ended up being your total effort for the qualifier that was in the one threes mm -hmm. that was clean and had had a trigger freeze and you even called it out you're like oh, that trigger freeze <laughs> and i'm thinking yep. to myself that's a that's a one three. It was a low one three. Might have been a one three one, where you could have just been like, okay, I'm good. I'm gonna I'm gonna hold up on that. Even with the trigger freeze, that's an ultra competitive time. But 
in true Billy Barton fashion, <laughs> you are literally going to put the boot on the neck. And within that initial effort, put down the 123, which ends up being the fastest time we see for the drill for the entire event. And I don't want to bury the lead here, but I know the people who are going to be watching this may or most likely have already seen some of the live and some of the videos that were created by the crowd that stood around during the, uh, during the final event. And I love that idea from the standpoint that it gives everybody an understanding the true fans of this get an immediate understanding and get that immediate feedback. Those true fans can then come back when we're ready to present our finished video product. And in addition to those true fans, now we reach the entire audience and I hope to continue to gather that, that, that sort of momentum with this. The question for me is, to you, do you feel like you might have changed the outcome overall of the qualifier by, like I said before, literally putting the boot on the neck of the rest of the field. Like, you laid it down to a point where people were walking around for the next two days going, wow, forget it, I'll just keep my 20 bucks. Um, right. Was that your feeling? What was the feedback to you at that point? I mean, I knew that was a risk. It was funny. My, my buddies were saying, hey, man, you should just, like, not go shoot this and show up at the last minute, you know, <laughs> and, and shoot. Um, just from that, that's as far as trying to make money element. That was, that was never what it was about for me. It was trying to like take other shooters money. Um, to me, it was just, you know, about the, the competition piece and, and, uh, you know, the test of what you can do. And so, um, yeah, I, I, you know, I don't, I don't think it's funny in the competition world, how, how different groups of shooters emphasize certain things. Right. And, and like we saw, I mean, all the big boys came out to participate in, in the build drill, you know, competition. Right. But like super spicy draws and splits are not what it takes to win nationals, right? And so, um, you know, folks emphasize different things. I don't feel like the GM participation last year was, like, super high other than me and Isaac putting all the money in. Uh, but, you know, I knew, hey, even if I kind of blow out GM a little bit, you know, there will still be all those, all the, all the different classes can still participate and, and try to win their um, different classes. And, and so that was, I was hoping, I was hopeful that that would still be the case. Well, there's no, there's no right or wrong kind of strategy to it. You play your game, you play it the way you want to, but you touch on a couple of different things here. One, the idea isn't to build the pot. It's not about luring others in so that you can swoop <laughs> exactly. in later and, and yep. literally then just claim it. Um, the idea is to get to the final where there's industry money, where there's actual prize money, not taking money out of the pockets of the other shooters. And I fully respect that that's the model that i'm trying to build here and if i get my way admittedly it'll be a heck of a lot more than three grand before we're done with this thing it'll be a lot of money i want it to be significant money that could potentially be something that that moves the needle a little bit for people that all aside that's my goal the big question here is and you touched on this in that is that when the gm guys come through the max and the jj and the christian seiler and the aaron eddins and others um, we end up in a situation where you said this, a, a half second draw and splits isn't the total package to be an IPSC or USPSA national champion. However, there is value to that particular element, which is very strong in your skill set. I found it interesting, two things. One, Max, who is one of the ultra elite will go down as one of the greatest shooters of all time and has been a friend of mine for almost 20 years told me flat out i can come out there and shoot a clean one six and that'll be it that'll be what i do <laughs> that's not going to be a winner yeah. but a guy who knows his game so well literally does exactly what he said he would do the weekend prior when we talked about it and he comes out and he shoots a one six which incidentally went down in the qualifier as the second fastest time for a GM clean. That was fourth overall behind an M in Brennan Brennicke, who's a friend of yours, Yep. who's an M, but also has a legit fast draw. So mm -hmm. where's the balance piece? There is some element there. You know what I mean? If, if Christian Seiler, who's a world champion and threatens all the time, can go fast, but has to slow down another two tenths to guarantee his hits. You know what I mean? There, there's, there's, there's elements here that I like about this drill because it's simple. It's a legitimate test. You don't have to be fast on your feet, and you certainly can't make up for any of the elements necessary here 
by building on elements that you might possess, like the ability to move in and out of positions and so on. So yeah. um, I, I know there's a balance here, and I know that you, you clearly focus on this, but you have so many other facets of not only your GM shooting game, but also your training. Where's the yep. balance piece here? Yeah, I mean, there's definitely a balance, right? It's, it's interesting, right? I think some of the guys that do super well at this kind of thing uh, are guys that actually kind of can't come from more of the defensive tactical shooting world, um, like myself and Brennan, right? Because we grew up, uh, A, realizing that a fast draw is important because sometimes the bad guy gets to go first, right? And also doing a lot of shooting like inside of seven yards at those kind of classic self-defense distances and that kind of thing. And so, you know, this is something that I've been, I've been doing build drills for 10 years, right? I'm only three years into USPSA. Um, and so I've actually kind of largely abandoned some of that style of shooting uh, while I have really started learning and, and trying to master um, the match side of it. And so there's definitely a balance, right? And when you're talking about low-hanging fruit, that stuff where you can put in, you know, 20% of the effort to get 80% of the return, like draws and splits are not it. Um, you know, mm -hmm. especially especially at a match like this, Carry Optics Nationals, <coughs> where we basically... Uh -oh. Didn't get to uh, didn't get to draw to any targets hardly, um, but you know the um, but like you said it's still it's still an element you know I was trained lucky enough to train with Eric Grafell earlier this year and, and and that was something he said he's like hey man at a, at a world shoot yeah you know maybe I'm only beating you by two or three tenths on a draw, but if you're doing 20, 30, 40 stages at a national or world event like every little thing matters I man I was at Area Six last year where JJ and Max were four hundredths of a second different overall for the match, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? So, like, at that level, and when you're that consistent, yeah, every little thing matters. Um, and if you, you know, can have that element of, of a few good draws in there on close targets, um, or just being super aggressive with good hits um, on, on close targets, yeah, it, it definitely can make a difference for sure. Well, it's... It, it, Yes, it, it's, obviously it has merit. What's interesting about it is there are a number of individuals, you included, um, who essentially in the world of USPSA carry the GM or the M uh, classification and have this specific skill set honed. And within that scope, there are those who ride along with the elite top 10 guys in USPSA IPSC all the time and immediately discount this particular element or this particular skill set against the broader skill set. And that, I think, has turned up in a post from a few days ago where I just clipped a, click, a quick piece of video of a friend, Aaron Eddins, making his two-second attempt which brought out some people who had some comments about, well, I can shoot faster than him. And then that brought out yep. some people who wanted to run the, to the defense of the, you know, the standing USPSA Open National Champion being a broader shooter than just this, this drill, which then opens up the conversation slash argument about whether or not this drill has value, whether or not this limited facet of the whole shooter's game has value. And I make the case and I am willing to put my money and the money of sponsors where that mouth and that argument is this has value not only for M GM elite level shooters but you mentioned it earlier this has value within the personal defense market because like you said earlier very eloquently the bad guy oftentimes gets to go first and if you are so incredibly fast that you can minimize that to the point where somebody can't react faster than you're moving when you've decided to move. This there's tremendous value here. So where do you how do you see that playing as a way to expose shooters who otherwise might not get the spotlight, for instance, on a shooting USA or something like that? Yeah, you know, I think it's really cool. Um, you know, to, to isolate those kind of skill sets. And, and, and not only that, but like we've talked about, man, I mean, obviously this is every every cop and, you know, like self folks that are interested in self-defense across the country, every, everybody that's a shooter at all uh, knows what a build drill is for the most part, even if they don't even know what USBSA Nationals is. And so, you know, I think this, this will grab some attention, hopefully, and, and get some exposure for what we're doing at a place like Nationals to those folks that, that are 
are going to be pretty interested and think that you know a three second build drill is 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 the standard or whatever that there, there's a whole different level of shooting out there in, in a lot of different facets and uh, hopefully get some exposure to the sport and grow grow some some visibility there too that's the i mean 100 percent the mantra dude i love it to that extension uh a friend now a guy i've never met before nationals who is a boisterous and very colorful individual uh buck lawler <laughs> i already know who you're talking about yeah <laughs> shot yeah before i even get going with the name you know who i'm saying yeah. florida man he yep. legit dropped a 1.7 from appendix. And I'm not saying yep. he just pulled a 1.7 and ran the gun. He pulled a 1.7 clean from appendix. And yeah. um, I understand, I mean, you and I didn't go into this in person in depth, but I understand, and I'm not putting you on the spot, that you have a equally spicy from concealment slash appendix type of bill drill in the event that that becomes a facet of this where do you see that as far as the movement of this drill it'd be really cool um i i'm i'm a huge fan of working from concealment obviously you know i'm, I'm one of those guys that definitely sticks a gun in my pants every day and so i, I value that skill set and work on that for sure uh isaac put out we, we got into it a little bit me and buck isaac put out that four by four challenge with uh howitzer and so forth uh last year or whenever it was and and buck and i both did that four by four under a second from concealment um which was which was pretty fun so we we've been we've been working in that zone for for quite a while for sure i I was expecting buck to throw down a a pretty spicy time for sure uh you know as far as doing it at nationals i don't i don't it would be super interesting to see you know the involvement i don't know how how many shooters there uh, would be interested in, in participating in a concealment challenge, but it would be a lot of fun for, for those of us who uh, are into that stuff, for sure. Well, as we get started with this thing, it's, it's going to have to be attached to events where there are large groups of competitors, shooters already, but as this thing, I hope, gets out of the crawling stage and into the walking, eventually the running stages, it potentially could stand alone and could become whatever it ends up being. In Isaac's four by four, if that if I'm not mistaken, that's four shots, four yards. Is that right? Correct. Okay. Yep. The reason I asked that is that brings me back to another question I wanted to pose to you. There was for somehow there got to be some kind of a misunderstanding initially that was quickly cleaned up that we were going to shoot the final at five <laughs> yards. And yes, I want to I want to I want to unpack that first of all. Where'd you get the ad idea, and did it? affect your strategy slash speed at attempt when it was obviously not going to be five it was going to be seven how did that work out for you yeah so i i don't i don't know for sure where that idea i had first talked to isaac about this event at shot show back in january and that was where i first heard that it was you know potentially going to be at five yards Uh, i thought i heard the five yard thing on a couple podcasts leading up to that and so i don't know somehow i had it in my head isaac i think had it in his head i think we both thought it was five yards until we basically showed up to the final and uh and it wasn't which was fine i mean the build drill obviously is is a standard that is shot at seven yards and so that's that's kind of the, the the proper way to do it if there is a way to do it um but yeah five yards would have been interesting from a from a speed perspective for sure i mean there's definitely significantly it doesn't seem like a big difference but it's you know uh, almost 30%, and it's it takes significantly less precision at five yards for sure um, and, and emphasizes speed a little bit. So I, I think we probably would have seen um, probably almost a tenth faster at five, to be honest. Okay. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad it was at seven. Me too. And to your point, I don't know where Isaac got that idea because he asked me, are we doing this at five? And I'm like, I don't know who made that up, but it wasn't me. Yeah. So no, and I'm pseudo in charge here. So yeah, it's at seven, friends. <laughs> um, sure. And and I say pseudo because you know I mean this thing. This I, I'm hopeful that this thing just continues to grow on its own and becomes, you know, something potentially bigger than this, bigger potentially than this one pistol skill. Um, I would like to see this applied to other drills potentially, but I definitely want to explore a couple of options, things that we've talked about like creating a dedicated target for this. And and I sort of tabled that with you, I tabled it with Isaac, and I want to put it in front of the audience as well. And we're going to continue to gain traction with this and have conversations about all of this. But um, your input initially on the target was we would 
not necessarily expand the A zone or the target zone, let's say, because I think in this case it's either a, it's either going to be in the target or it's going to be in the surrounding area of the target that doesn't score. The point that you made, and I'd like to kind of talk about that a little bit more, is that we should expand or we should measure that scoring area of the target equally, both vertically as well as horizontally. It needs to expand equally in both directions. Why do you want to go that route? Well, that was just a general. This was a general comment I made as far as you know target design. We just actually did a podcast recently, but um, yeah, I mean, I, I think targets in general, whether it's for this drill or for shooting in general, I, I think target design is pretty important. Um, and it, to me, it should result in shooters creating an, an aiming scheme for that target that kind of makes sense. Um, you know, if you have uh, a, a triangle as your scoring zone. Well, how does that impact the way that you're aiming? You're never going to shoot a triangle-shaped group on target, right? So why would our, our our target scoring zone be shaped that way? Generally speaking, the faster you go, your group's going to expand, and it should really expand concentrically around your point of aim, which obviously is where kind of like bullseyes and stuff come from. Um, I actually really like the shape of the USB-SA A zone because if you're going to be more forgiving in either direction, obviously there's going to be vertical movement in the sights as you're shooting in recoil. There really shouldn't be anything there horizontally. And so it, it, you know, that, that kind of vertical shaped A zone encourages you to stop the gun precisely on a transition, but it's a little bit more forgiving um, in your, for your recoil control when you're going super fast, which I think is, is pretty interesting. Um, but yeah, you know, I think if we look at different targets, that's an interesting idea. It'll be interesting to see, you know, the, the one concern I kind of have is like, you know, like we are saying, for, for this is a known standard. And so if we're, you know, trying to get people to grasp what this is who aren't, you know, from the USB-SA world, uh, you know, they're at a, I want them to <laughs> be able to kind of relate to a target that this is normally shot on. The biggest thing I think maybe you're, I don't know if you're trying to accomplish this or not, but I would love to eliminate the head zone, <laughs> the yes. head box Next from it question. for sure. Next yeah. question. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So whether we just... Uh, one of my buddies were, were joking before we went up there. He's like, man, I'm just going to show up with a pocket knife and just cut the heads off all the targets before we start this final. But, uh, but yeah, that, that, that's, uh, that's a part of it we should, we should look at for sure, I think. I agree, and I want, to, I want to go into that now too, and that was literally loaded for the next question because the 22 build drill challenge that was not, it was not set to go to a final, but it ended up being you and Isaac back and forth, out of pocket, buying back in, buying back in. Ultimately, the run that Isaac took down the 22 challenge with had a single shot in what uh, I'm going to allow to use my friend Potato's term, <laughs> the, the miscatcher, miss catcher. if you yeah. will. Um, yeah. You, I think, to a certain level of uh, competitive equity, maybe somebody wanted to say it was karma or whatever, you had one in the miscatcher this time. And sure we is. can just we can just call it, you know, maybe we maybe it's time to say, OK, it's even right. We're back to even. Yeah. And yeah. yes, let's make it easy on everybody by just simply removing the upper scoring zone is what I like to say, because that helps mm -hmm. us expose this beyond an audience that understands why this target looks like what it looks like and doesn't have to maybe mentally qualify for themselves the fact that a humanoid target is designed as effective scoring against uh, a threat or an assailant. That's right. That is what this is, but at the same time, that isn't what this is, if that makes sense. Um, I'm sort of walking a line very carefully there, but I like the idea of removing the head. I think from a initial logo and what we've run with, thanks very much to Howitzer, and we need to speak more about Howitzer because they made this happen. This wouldn't have happened if it weren't for Eric and Howitzer saying, I like your idea. Let's, let's, let's move forward with it. We can fully rework the logo. I'm not worried about that. If it makes for better competition, if it makes the competition make more sense from a competitive standpoint, and I think you might agree with that. You've already mentioned that you would like to do that. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, the the head, the whole head box thing was was just was crazy. You know, it was it was it's one of those things. I think you know, last year when they when the when the competition was first set up, you know, no one ever never ever imagined the the winning run would have you know, one up in the credit card. You know, that, right. that's just not something you even think to ask that question ahead of time. Uh, of course, they scored it 
per USPSA, which which that scores exactly the same as as a center. That's not the way build drills are usually scored. Obviously, you're supposed to have them in the in the in the center mass A zone. Obviously, um, right. so yeah. I mean, I would I would have been really tempted this year to be like, hey, that doesn't even that run doesn't even count the one that's up in the head box. But you know, it was kind of karma <laughs> for last year, uh, and so we uh, we let it roll. But uh, I'm also thankful that you know we had the had them in the fastest run of the event was the one in, in the kind of the, the preliminary, if you will, which was all clean yep. in the center. So at least we can say like, hey, like this, this stuff is possible, um, you know, in the in the in the real the real A zone, which is pretty cool. You got it. That's awesome. So um, I am hopeful. I am a little more than hopeful. I am aiming towards the next one of these happening at the CMP in Talladega during Open and PCC Nationals. Um, obviously, this is not a PCC drill. We're not, we're not going to test this <laughs> drill against PCCs. However, okay. uh, the question comes to you, how do you feel as the ringer, the guy who is now the man to beat for the big check, about shooting potentially against somebody who would qualify against you using an open gun and an open holster. Yeah, that would that would be that would be really cool. I mean, for the I don't <laughs> I don't even own an open gun to be uh, completely honest. I mean, like like we talked about before, kind of my background. I mean, my my match gun that I shot at CO Nationals is is the gun that goes in my pants every day. So that's kind of my mindset behind Sweet, shooting. Dude. So I don't even own an open gun, um, but I, w I would feel super confident. It's interesting how there's there's pros and cons to everything. Um, you know, the, the open guns, obviously, if we were doing a 25-yard build drill, that would be a whole different <laughs> ball of wax there for sure, just because you get so much more control, um, you know, with something like an open gun at that distance. And you can, you can, you know, shoot seven-yard splits at 25 and still put them all in the same spot, which is pretty cool. But yeah. at seven, I mean, it, it's really the draw it is, is what makes your time um, at yep. seven. The splits are important. But, you know, the difference for me between that, you know, 165 conservative run and that 1-2 is almost all draw, right? It, it's how, well, how much are you waiting for to see on your, on your dot? For me, the draw is significantly faster, um, actually, with something like a Glock because it's just so, more, uh, so much more scoopable, if you will, because you, yep. you don't have that huge beaver tail in the back to, to get around. You don't have to worry about safeties and things like that. And, of course, the gun's just a lot lighter, so... Uh, yeah, I, I would I would feel pretty confident. I would actually kind of feel like I have an unfair advantage on a seven yard build drill uh, going into Open Nationals, but uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. That's I mean you're you're the soundbite man now. That's what I need. That's the kind of thing that we need to hear because those are those elements that make this thing spicy, man. And it's so freaking exciting to know that we've we're we're going to continue to meet people with the similar skill set as you and Isaac and Brennan and others. Uh, Buck included there. There's a bunch of dudes that are starting to turn up out there in the world that do this in such a way. And as we can continue to meet those people and shine the spotlight on them, I think that's where this thing really, really gets exciting because there are others who are out there going, well, I'm working on it with my open gun and I'm doing this and I'm doing that. And I'm starting to hear yeah. some of that rumbling about, I hear this is going to happen. So as we gain traction going forward, I'm Super excited to see how this starts to play out. The uh, uh, let's talk about your association with Howitzer because again, it's vitally important that they get the recognition as more than just a simple T-shirt company. And they, Eric, has put together a cadre of people similar to you and you included that specialize in military, law enforcement, and personal protection training. First and foremost, that's the thing that he's moving with the Blue Line Foundation. Are you part of that? Tell me about being a part of the Howitzer Pro Team. Yeah, very, very, very cool, man. One of the things I talked to, to Eric about when I first met him is, is like, it's funny enough, people in the industry might not realize this, but so many of the companies in our industry, whether it's gun companies or whatever it is, are not run in any way, shape, or form by shooters. And and sometimes you can tell that you know pretty clearly. Howitzer, that is not the case, and you can also tell that, right? You've got Eric, um, obviously, heading up that company, and, and as a shooter, you know, he's, he's yes, it's a, a give-back brand, but, he, you know, he's giving back to the community in a way that, that really makes sense and supporting a lot of really good people um, that are out here trying to, to train others and especially, you know, deliver good information to uh, military and law enforcement guys, guys that are out there 
um, defending our freedoms and, and putting their lives in harm's way on a daily basis. And so, yeah, I couldn't be more excited to be, you know, a part of a, a company like that. And uh, Eric's Eric's doing a lot of good work, so it's it's very cool. That's awesome stuff. The fact that this thing went down, and then within a day or two, you posted a couple of links to your YouTube content to <laughs> essentially take people through the sauce. How does Billy do it? Well, here's a video yeah. on how to speed up your splits. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, you've been doing this for a while, obviously, but you also, as we can see by your setup right now and for this interview, you create content for people. You're more, you're a trainer, but you also are creating content. Talk about how people can see more Billy Barton content, how they can learn the secret sauce. I mean, where to find your stuff. Sure, man. So I'm um, obviously on the website. I run a training company called Spectrain. Um, website there is Spectrain US, where our schedule is and all, all the training info and links to all the things. But yeah, we, we have a podcast, me and Brennan, uh, who came in second in the, in the main Build Drill event. Oh, He's uh, one of the regular co-hosts on my podcast, Speed Up and Get Your Hits, along with Nick Young, another um, instructor from Velox Training Group. And, and we just talk about speeding up and getting your hits, how to get faster, how to get better at shooting. And, uh, and we have a great time with that. But yeah, everything's on... Uh, the Spectrain YouTube channel, um, the podcast is everywhere that, that podcasts are. Um, but yeah, YouTube and then, of course, Instagram and, and all the places. Uh, it's pretty much Spectrain everywhere. That, uh, that folks makes can find me us, happy so. to know that Brennan is a big part of it because I'd never met Brennan yeah. before the weekend prior. So one of the elements that was happening, and if you'll remember this, he was hesitant to take his allotted one more couple tries because, you know, yeah. he was closest to you. I said... Anybody within a tent gets the right to try again one last time before we declare Billy the winner of the qualifier. He was within an 11, you know, I mean, 11 hundreds. So I'm like close mm -hmm. enough. And I'm talking yeah. over that. I'm talking over the PA and I'm saying, <laughs> yeah, you can do it. You can do it. And there's all kind of chatter and people back and forth. Yeah. And ultimately, he didn't want to do it because he didn't want to spend any more money. So I was like, bro, you're on the spot. There's 20 bucks. Come on, man. Just try and now, uh, yeah. and now the chicken gallery's coming in and the peanuts and everybody's like, yeah, yeah, you got to do it. You got to do it. I didn't realize that you guys had as close a relationship as you do. And I'm glad that you do because he may not like to hear this piece. But you will remember when I said to you, is he close? Can he get there? And you go, there is an exponential difference between <laughs> one four and one two. Exponential. And... Yeah that's where we go from great like blindingly amazing in his case to ultra elite like we're in the top 1000th percent of the population when we go from 0.4 to 0.2 what's the difference and what does he need to do to get from where he is at 1.4 maybe a 1.3 ish you know he had a 1.3 how does he get from 1.3 to 1.2 or even faster yeah so i mean it, it's a, it's a lot, right? It's a lot. It, it's crazy how when you start getting kind of to the the knife edge of like human performance, like which is what's physically possible, um, those those little tiny things are just become massive mountains. You know, when you first start doing a build drill, like you you can take you can learn things that take half a second or three quarters of a second off your time all at once, right? And then you start looking for like a hundredth of a second at a time. Um, and it just gets, it gets really, really, you know, into the, the minutia. So, you know, as an example, shooting, you know, for me, a 15 split is like an entirely different thing from shooting 11s and 12s. It, it doesn't sound that different, right? But the, it, the, the, <laughs> there's a lot of shooters that can shoot 15s, but, but can't really get any, any below that. That's like a real threshold. Um, and so obviously the, you know, the, the, the splits are a big part of it. Uh, won't, won't take all day on here. Like you said, I got a 30 minute video where I kind of break down my system for it, but it has a lot to do with grip pressures. Obviously it's huge. You know, I know you mentioned Isaac talking about that, um, after his runs, how much grip pressure plays a, plays a role in that for sure. Um, and then just the way you're kind of manipulating the, the trigger, but really the draw is a massive part of it as well. You know, I think for me, if I'm trying to shoot, you know, like I said, a one six versus a one two. The draw is the biggest, the biggest difference. At seven yards, once you get the gun in the middle of the A zone, you should be able to essentially pull the trigger as fast as you can and, and guarantee um, A zone hits. But how soon you're pulling the trigger as the gun is coming out, um, you know, is is that kind of X factor that can make a, a really big difference. And so, 
you know, how soon, even way before the gun's up in front of your face, you know, how soon you're able to get your sights on target as the gun is kind of coming up to the apex of the presentation, you know, can actually start allowing you to fire your first shots before the gun is even all the way up. Um, and you can shave off, you know, you know, a tenth or a half a tenth from, from doing that, which is obviously the technique that I was using for my final runs. I think I had a one three something on the board in the final. And so that's when it's time to really full send it. And you're really not guaranteeing that first shot at all, which is why the first one goes up in the head box, right? And then the rest are in the middle. That's, that's kind of some, somewhat expected using that technique when you're just trying to hook up and, and really send one. That's kind of, that's kind of where it's at. So uh, yeah, I mean the draw and the splits, man, are just are just pretty much all all that it is for the, for the build drill. It's exciting because for me, from a presentation standpoint, what am I going to make a TV show out of? How am I going to fill five yeah. minutes between these commercials when the event that we're actually there to see occurs in <laughs> less than a second and a half? Well, right. I tell you, this is how we do it. We unpack all of the little elements that go into that one second point ish, whatever it is. And we have the ability to slow it down and stop and look and analyze and go, OK, we're at a 0 0.54, 0 0.58 beat to first shot here. That's already an advantage against a 0 0.7. Can the 0 0.7 make it up? Which in a couple of cases, we have those. We have that occurring. 0 0.7 followed by 0.12s and 0.11s will catch a 0.54 draw if you're following that up with 0 0.14, 0 0.15 splits. Over the course of five more shots, the math right. gets you there. So that's where this thing, for me at least, somebody who cannot at this point yet shoot anywhere near that fast yet, and <laughs> I have the ability to literally go through this and figure out how it's all going to work in terms of what we're going to present to educate not only the true fans of this, but also the transient audience, those that are just interested in shooting in one way or another. That's the piece for me that I'm excited about. The other thing that I want to announce while you're involved here is, is we're going to be presenting not only a sizzle reel, but early access to see segments as they become developed through the Shooting USA Patreon and through potentially the Shooting USA Vimeo. Um, We'll be working towards that and announcing that here in the coming weeks, hopefully sooner than later, as the process is already underway across the hall. So that's cool. very cool. And all yeah. of your love... content is cool. We're driving people to you now. Um, I am with a, as soon as we're off of this, I'm going to be searching Spotify for the get your what name your podcast again. Get your hits. Get your hits faster this or something is, like that. Uh, speed up and get your hits. It's my speed attempt at, a, at a antithetical to the classic slow down and get your hits that we've all been told over the years. Right. Uh, I think it's some of the worst worst advice you can give somebody, but no, man, man. I love I just real quick. I love how you say yet, right? Because so many people, when they see this kind of competition, they go. I, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've heard, "Oh, well, you just have, you know, an unnaturally fast trigger finger." Mm -hmm. um, and it's like, no, dude. But I have I have the receipts. I have the video from when I started shooting, and it was like this was not a thing, right? This took right. me like ten years of very intentional right. practice and like developing a system. Uh, to learn and then based upon those systems, I mean guys like Brennan He's been shooting just a fraction of the time that I have you know over the last couple of years have been able to you know cut that learning curve significantly so it's um, You know, it's 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 very 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 doable for sure It just takes you know a little, little bit of education in the process and just then put in the work man But I, I'm, I'm convinced that just about anybody can do it. That's So beautifully said because you just fully encouraged me to continue to follow the path man such an exciting time so looking forward to september at cmp and then beyond that iron sights back again in ohio as this thing continues to gain traction and we we just keep rolling it forward and hopefully make it bigger and better every time we do it and as the new ringer billy barton's <laughs> the man to beat folks be ready because we know what he can do or at least we know what he's shown so far anything i'm just i'm just a guy who loves shooting and loves uh, training and trying to get better and uh, help helping others do the same thing, hopefully. So, uh, obviously, huge, huge shout out to everybody that was involved in putting this together. You especially, really appreciate it. It was a lot of fun, and uh, can't wait to do it again.